You know, subhanAllah, I come across one particular family and I'll mention this with great caution where I geographically point out, I'm not even going to say anything, I'm just going to say a family. So it becomes as open and generic as possible. I won't mention anything more than the example itself. A particular youngster, a young girl, she had a great attachment to Islam, a great attachment to Deen. When Ramadan came, mashallah, it was tahajjud every day as well, in addition to the taraweeh and memorizing Quran. And there was a mashallah, you can say that there was an attachment to Deen within that family life. However, there were some issues that arose within the family, and I'm not going to mention them because it becomes more specific again, but I'll just cut to the chase and mention what happened. Due to doubts in that person's mind, due to unanswered questions, due to being misinformed themselves, that same person who memorized half of Quran, who was absolutely what we would refer to as a Pakka Muslim, a Muslim, that same individual started not only doubting their faith, but turned her back on the faith. She said, I no longer identify as being a Muslim. A friend of mine, he said to me, he was on, you know, do you guys know Padal Jamaat is? So he was on Padal Jamaat in Wales, one of the first Jamaats that came Padal in UK four months, so he was there. Anyway, what happened was, is that they knocked on one guy's door. So they knock on the door and then the one guy opens the door and he says, okay, uh, we've been told there are Muslims that live here. So we come to meet the Muslim, we're from this local masjid and so on. He said, are there any Muslims that live here? Yeah, 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 my brother, he's a Muslim. My brother was Muslim. Okay, so, brother, how about yourself? He goes, well, uh, you see me, brother, I'm half kafir and half Muslim. <laughs> this is his exact words. Half kafir, half Muslim. So then, like, subhanallah, what, you know, what's this? It doesn't make sense. You can't be this and that. What, what you are, not you are, you're not. And then, nevertheless, Khair, he opened up a few things and had doubts and skepticism and so on. Cutting the long again because it's very difficult to mention what that would be a whole five, six hour lecture breaking up all these points. It's too long. I'm getting to a point, inshallah, you'll understand. Nevertheless, the sad thing which happened was is the father who was very far from Deen. All he had was one concern, one concern only. How can I maximize my bank balance? How can I build houses? How can I have properties? How can I have jaydad? How can I increase my monetary value in this world? How can I increase my worldly accolade? That was his concern. That was the maqsa, that was his fikr. Give a basic answer, where's the money gonna come from? So in this boom, morning, noon and night, he kept himself. Morning, noon and night. Allah Ta'ala jane how he thought of this idea. But he had this thought, you know what? I think I've done enough, I should do, I should do Umrah. I should do Umrah, I should go to Allah's house. Allah gave me so much money, I should go. I mean, you're so cut off from deen and Allah puts in your heart and you act upon it. So we, yeah, we should entertain that guest. So that thought came in his heart that I should go to Umrah, I should fix up a little bit, I should maybe get on the deen. So he went. And anyway, when he was there, check out this one. He actually passed away there. Mashallah, you just mean you and I would identify with those sentiments and say, Mashallah, Allah's shukr. But that's not where it ends, unfortunately. The children flew out there and made a campaign. We want to take our father back. Nah, we're burying him in Wales. We're not having it. But look, yar, he just passed away. Yar, let him bury there, subhanAllah. But the lack of deen was so much. Okay, they fought tooth and nail. Allah jane, how they got even got the ajal? I don't know the full story exactly. Just this much was relayed. How on earth would you give up the land and of the Haramain, Makkah and Medina? Alhamdulillah for me, UK is home. My mother is English, my grandmother is English, we come from Norman Saxons. So subhanAllah, my half of me is English. And through being a Muslim, it makes me a better person of society by holding on to Islam, Alhamdulillah. What is the definition of a good citizen? It is a Muslim because a person is cognizant and conscious of what Allah subhanAllah says. And Allah says great things. And if only we practice on real Islam, this itself will shine in society. So when I say that buried in Makkah and Medina, that's every Muslim's dream. But the fact is that they said, nah, we want him near us, so bring him back. Look at what level of deen we brought ourselves to. What has our community actually, what are we going through? Just outside Jewsbury, just outside Jewsbury, where a friend of mine, he said that he met a couple of families. And it was a small community, a few people. And what they did was, is that they, their children didn't go to the weekly madrasa, but they would go to the Sunday church school because they would learn to sing. 
Now, why I'm, I'm mentioning these things to you, why? Is it because I want to demoralize you? Do I want to mention negative things? No, not at all. It's just our focus has shifted from that deen, from that thing which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came with. Our focus has shifted. When we look at the halat and the condition of Muslim, it's because our focus has not just, it's gone polar opposite. So we need to firstly understand this, that our success purely lies in following the Prophet Muhammad That is our number one role model. That is our number one success. That is our number one maqsad and purpose for coming into this worldly life.